Today, OpenAI released Codex, a new agentic platform for coding. And it's a little bit hilarious to me because they've kind of recycled this name. This was something that existed years ago, and I think most people have forgotten about the idea of Codex, something that could come in and help you with your software code. And that's exactly what Codex is designed to do. So here's three things that you need to know about it. The first thing is that this is really OpenAI's first true agent-based platform. So there's deep research, which is sort of like an agent for going out and doing research about you know, an article you're writing or something like that, but it's not really taking action on your behalf. It's still really information-based. And the definition of an AI agent is something that can kind of go out and do stuff for you. So Codex is OpenAI's first real attempt at doing that. And it makes sense to do this with coding because it's something that AI is really good at, it's something that people need and pay a lot of money for, and it's a very defined domain. Stuff either works or doesn't. It's not like writing or you know booking you a flight or something like that where there's a lot of different complexities and you don't know whether something succeeded. Either the code runs and executes and works or it doesn't fundamentally. So coding is a good thing for agents to be working on and that's likely why they've started here. Again, a good market. There's people who can pay for it. It's a very strong need that a lot of companies have and it's something that they're software is pretty good at. The second thing to know is that it is really designed for those software development enterprise kinds of teams, or at least startup level teams. So if you're just kind of noodling around with Python, this probably isn't going to be for you. You need to have a Git repository, you need to have basically processes in place for managing code with a team, which again, a lot of even open source projects are going to have but it's not really for that sort of casual, like, okay, I'm gonna to throw together an app in JavaScript type of use case. It really is meant to tie into a existing software development workflow and kind of replace that junior entry-level coder. And apparently it's very good, according to their benchmarks, at doing that kind of thing. Now, the third thing to know is that this is basically almost gonna be free in the beginning they basically say that they're gonna provide very generous access to it. So they clearly wanna win market share, they wanna get uh, buzz going, they wanna get companies using this tool and seeing the value in it. They list a few of the companies like Cisco, um, Temporal that are using this already, and they obviously wanna get their foot in the door. And then down the line, maybe this is something that they'll charge more for, maybe they'll have upgraded features, better coding, better tie-ins to, outside info sources, uh, maybe better knowledge of APIs that companies might want to connect with, that kind of thing. But they, they clearly are basically taking a chat GPT type approach of just put it out there and then see how people use it and make it cheap or, you know, in most cases here, it's, it seems like it's going to be pretty much free. This also makes a lot of sense for them because, again, it's a high value thing. Coding, good code is very, very valuable, but it's also relatively low compute on their side. So. If it was like, um, we're going to replace all of your image creation or video creation, that would be very costly to them because that requires a lot of compute. Code requires some but less, and yet it's still valuable. So it makes sense that this is where they're getting started with offering something that's going to be powerful but also pretty much free. If you found this helpful, please do like and subscribe for all my analysis of the breaking AI news.